Welcome to Relation Tales. Please like this video and subscribe Relation Tales. After 45 years of marriage, a husband starts to see signs that something isn't right with his wife. He hires a private investigator to find out the truth. And what he learns shocks him. Let's look into the details of the story. I'll be home very late tonight. You don't need to wait up for me, Brad said calmly as he stood by the kitchen counter. He looked at his wife, Barbara, who was busy on her phone. Barbara nodded without really paying attention, her eyes still on the screen and her fingers moving fast. Brad felt uneasy but kept a calm face. Did you hear me? he asked, making sure she understood. She blinked and finally looked up, seeming surprised to see him. I heard you, she said in a distracted voice. Are you staying late at work? she asked. He nodded, noticing how quickly she went back to her phone. I've got a lot to catch up on. Brad waited, hoping she would ask him something else. He hoped she cared, but nothing happened. He watched her for a little longer, noting the subtle changes he had been observing for months. The way she turned her phone screen away from him, the brief flicker in her gaze when he entered the room, and the muted tone of her voice during certain calls. All these signs were minor, almost too subtle to notice individually. But together, they painted a picture he could no longer ignore. Anything special planned for tonight? He asked in a light tone, as if it were just casual conversation. For a moment, her face went blank before she smiled. No, same as always, she said. I'll probably just watch a movie and go to bed early. Brad nodded, fighting the urge to confront her right then and there. Sounds great, he said, pushing away from the counter. See you tomorrow. He leaned in and kissed her on the cheek, a gesture that had once been filled with warmth and affection. Now it felt empty, like a mechanical routine. She tensed slightly at his touch, and that triggered a wave of anger inside him. Brad studied her face for a moment, but she had already returned to her phone, dismissing him as casually as she would swat away a fly. Without saying anything else, Brad grabbed his keys and walked to the door. Outside, the cool evening air hit him, helping him think clearly. Standing on the porch, he put his hand on the door handle and took a deep breath. Anger, resentment, and betrayal churned inside him like a storm, but he stayed calm. Tonight would change everything. He got into his car and started the engine the sound helping him relax. As he drove through the quiet streets, he thought about the plans he had made over the last few weeks. Every detail was carefully thought out, and there was no room for mistakes. As he drove, his phone buzzed on the passenger seat. He picked it up and glanced at the screen. A message from Barbara. Be careful. See you tomorrow. Brad stared at the text, gripping his phone tighter. Such a simple, mundane message, but it felt like a knife twisting inside him, he tossed the phone onto the seat and gripped the steering wheel harder, his knuckles turning white. Deep down, he knew Barbara wasn't just enjoying quiet evenings and movies. There was someone else in her life, someone who had crept into her heart. The thought made his stomach churn, but he forced himself to swallow the nausea. He needed to stay focused. As he merged onto the highway, the city lights blurred, and he pressed the gas pedal harder. The drive to the office was too familiar, one he had made for years. But tonight, everything felt different. There was a crackling tension in the air that made his skin prickle. His mind replayed the past few months, sorting through all the signs and uneasy moments. He remembered the first time he noticed the change in Barbara. Back then, it had been subtle. She wore a new dress and a perfume Brad didn't know. At first, he didn't think much of it. But then she started staying out late, wanting more privacy, and always kept her phone face down on the table. Doubts began to bother him. But he tried to ignore them, telling himself he was just being paranoid. He didn't want to invade her privacy, but when her phone rang while she was in the shower, curiosity got the best of him. The name Robert showed up on the screen. The message seemed innocent, but something about it didn't feel right. That moment made him decide to hire a private investigator named Clark. Clark handled the investigation carefully, providing detailed reports and photographs that only confirmed his deepest suspicions. Barbara was cheating. The evidence was undeniable. Despite this, Brad preferred to contain his anger, patiently waiting until he felt ready to confront the situation. And tonight, everything came to a head. The plan had been set in motion, and now there was no turning back. Brad drove his car into the garage under his office building, parked in his usual spot, and paused for a moment. The weight of the upcoming actions burdened him. He took a deep breath, pushing aside the doubts swirling in his mind. This wasn't just about him. It was about the 45 years he had dedicated to his marriage, the trust he had placed in Barbara, and the man he used to be before betrayal hardened his heart. 
Stepping out of the car, Brad headed for the elevator, his footsteps echoing in the quiet garage. The elevator ascended to the right floor, and its rhythmic hum matched the beating of his heart. As the doors opened, Brad entered the office. The familiar surroundings brought no comfort. Today, everything was different. Today, this place would become the command center for his revenge. But he didn't turn on the lights. The city lights outside illuminated the room just enough. Sitting at his desk, Brad looked at the blank computer screen, but his mind wasn't on work. It had been like this for days. Finally, he picked up the phone and called a number he knew well. Clark, it's time, Brad said when the call went through. His voice was calm, but his heart was racing. The private detective he hired three weeks ago stayed quiet for a moment. Are you sure about this? Clark asked, his usually rough voice sounding concerned. He had seen how much damage these kinds of plans could cause. Not only to the intended targets, but to those orchestrating them as well. Brad didn't waver. Absolutely, he replied with a firm tone. He had spent weeks thinking through this plan, carefully perfecting every detail until it was flawless. Meet me at the house at seven with the team. There was a pause on the line. All right, Clark finally responded, though his voice carried a note of disappointment. We'll talk later. The line went dead. Brad set the phone down and leaned back in his chair. His gaze wandered around the office and his thoughts drifted far away. He remembered the first time he met Clark during a dimly lit cafe meeting. Clark had approached the situation with a professional demeanor, laying out the plan with such precision that it suggested he was no stranger to this kind of work. Brad listened carefully, nodding in agreement as each word resonated with a turmoil in his soul. He distinctly remembered the first envelope Clark had handed over. Inside were photos of Barbara with another man, laughing, touching, kissing. For what felt like an eternity, Brad stared at them, his heart breaking with each passing moment. But then something inside him shifted. The pain turned to anger, and the anger to resolve. Rising from his chair, he walked over to the window and looked out at the city skyline. What once gave him joy now felt like the background of a life he hardly recognized. His mind went back to Barbara, the woman he had loved and trusted for so many years. How could she betray him? The thought hurt deeply, like a sharp pain. Unable to look out the window any longer, he turned away. He walked over to a small cabinet in the corner of the office and opened it, revealing a bottle of whiskey. He poured himself a glass. The golden liquid glowed in the soft light. He took a sip, the burn in his throat giving him a momentary break from the pain in his heart. Memories of long nights working in the office came rushing back. Barbara's voice on the phone telling him she missed him, her face lighting up when he walked through the door. Now all of that seemed like a facade. He had been so consumed with work with providing for them that he hadn't noticed the truth that had been right in front of him. But the reality was clear, and there was no going back. He took another sip of whiskey, feeling its warmth spread through him. His mind returned to the plan, a carefully crafted scheme that had taken weeks to perfect. It was simple, yet devastating. Clark would be there with the film crew, ready to capture everything on tape. Barbara, her lover, the betrayal. Then it would be laid bare for all to see. There would be no denying it. No way to escape the truth. Setting the glass down, Brad solidified his resolve. He returned to his desk and sat down with a deep sigh. Picking up his phone again, he began scrolling through past messages from Barbara. The messages were full of tenderness and dreams of what lay ahead for him. He couldn't help but wonder how sincere it all was. How long had she been deceiving him? How long had he been pretending to be a fool? His thoughts were suddenly interrupted by a knock on the door. Brad looked up. Feeling confused, it was late, and he thought the place would be empty. After hesitating for a moment, he got up and opened the door. Standing there was Billy, his assistant. Brad, are you okay? Billy asked, sounding worried. Billy had noticed changes in Brad over the past few weeks, the late nights, the distant look in his eyes. Smiling, Brad shook his head. I'm fine, Billy. There's just a lot on my mind. Billy nodded, though skepticism still lingered in his expression. I'm always here if you need anything. Brad appreciated the sentiment, but he felt this was a journey he had to take alone. Thanks, but I'm all right. You should really go. It's late now, Brad said. Billy hesitated for a moment before replying. All right, good luck, Brad. As Billy left and closed the door behind him, silence once again filled the office. The only sound was the steady ticking of the clock on the wall. Brad returned to his desk, feeling the weight of the night ahead press down on him. Taking a glass of whiskey in his hand, he sipped from it, his eyes fixed on the clock. 
Time seemed to crawl, each minute dragging on endlessly as he anxiously awaited the hour. Thoughts swirled in his mind, replaying the scenario over and over. He pictured Barbara's face when she learned the truth. Her surprise, her sense of disappointment, it would hurt. But compared to the pain she had caused him, it would pale. When the clock struck six, 30 p.m., Brad rose to his feet, his heart pounding wildly. Brad put on his coat and headed for the door. The drive home was short, but it felt like it took forever. He gripped the steering wheel so tightly that his knuckles turned white. His mind was filled with thoughts of what was coming, and the feeling of finality weighed on him. When he got home, the house was dark and quiet. After parking the car, he sat for a moment to gather his thoughts. Then, he got out and walked to the front door. Brad went into the living room and sat on the couch. In the silence, the ticking of the clock on the wall sounded louder, each tick bringing him closer to the truth. At exactly 7 p.m., the doorbell rang, and his heart skipped a beat. Opening the door, he saw Clark and the camera crew waiting outside. He nodded at Clark, and no words were needed. Everyone knew what was about to happen. Let's get to it, Brad said, stepping aside to let them in. They moved into the house quickly and efficiently setting up their equipment. Brad watched them work, his mind focused on the task ahead. There was no turning back now. Everything was ready. Soon, the truth would be revealed. After a long day, Barbara returned home, her nerves on edge. The house was quiet, but her thoughts were anything but calm. She replayed the events of the morning, searching for the source of her unease. Brad had been acting differently. His usual warmth had been replaced by a distant, almost calculating demeanor, and it unsettled her. You're just being paranoid, she whispered to herself, trying to brush off the nagging feeling. Her thoughts were interrupted by the sound of a car pulling into the driveway. Rushing to the window, she peeked through the curtains. It was Robert. Relief washed over her as she saw him step out of the car and a faint smile tugged at her lips. Opening the door before he had a chance to knock, she quickly pulled him inside. Hello, he said softly, his voice smooth and inviting. The man leaned in and gave her a quick, gentle kiss. It was brief, almost routine, but it helped calm her nerves. For a moment, her anxiety disappeared. Your husband is working late, right? Robert asked as he pulled her closer, leading her toward the stairs. Barbara nodded, trying to ignore the doubts in her mind. He'll be at the office for a while, she said, though she wasn't completely sure. Her stomach was in knots, but she pushed the feeling aside. We've got plenty of time. As they reached the bedroom, the outside world seemed to vanish as soon as the door clicked shut. Robert Hands found her, his touch both familiar and soothing. In that moment, she allowed herself to get lost, hoping the intensity of their connection would drown out the growing unease that had plagued her all day. But their brief escape from reality was soon interrupted. Just as they were about to fully indulge in the moment, the phone rang. The sharp sound pierced the air, causing both of them to flinch. Ignore it, Robert muttered, his voice thick with longing, as he pressed a kiss to her neck, hoping to draw her back in. But the ringing persisted, demanding their attention. With a sigh, she pulled away from Robert. I have to check, she said, reaching for the phone on the nightstand. Robert watched her, frowning. Who is it? He asked, his tone suddenly more serious. Barbara glanced at the screen and her heart raced when she saw Brad's name. It's him, she whispered, her voice trembling. Robert's eyes widened and he sat up, his mood shifting from desire to concern. What does he want? Barbara's head spun as she tried to make sense of the situation. After all, Brad never called her while she was working, especially not at this hour. Her heart raced, and her fingers trembled as she pressed the answer button. Hello, she said, her voice just above a whisper. Brad spoke with an eerie calm. Well, I hope you're ready for a surprise, he said, making a chill run down her spine. A sense of dread washed over Barbara as she tried to understand what he meant. What do you... She started, but her words faded as a noise outside the bedroom door made her freeze. Before she could fully grasp what was happening, the door swung open with such force that she gasped. Brad stood in the doorway, his expression unreadable, his eyes cold and unyielding. As Brad stepped into the room, a camera crew followed behind him. Their lenses pointed directly at her and Robert. Brad, Barbara exclaimed, pulling the sheet up to cover herself. What the hell is going on? Panic crept into her voice, making it rise sharply. Ignoring her question, Brad focused on Robert, who was frantically trying to gather his clothes, his face drained of color. There's no need to worry, Robert, Brad said sharply, his tone devoid of any warmth. You won't need them where you're going. 
Robert froze, his gaze darting nervously between Brad and the crew. What is this? he asked, struggling to maintain his composure, though his voice trembled. Behind him, the camera crew moved with practice precision, setting up lights, adjusting angles, and capturing every chaotic moment. Brad paused, moving further into the room, his eyes sweeping over the disarray on the bed, the rumpled sheets, and Robert's half-dressed figure, who was desperately trying to gather his clothing. Finally, Brad turned his gaze back to Barbara. A smirk tugged at his lips, sending a shiver down her spine. Come on, smile, you're live on air, he said, his tone dripping with mockery. The words hit Barbara like a slap to the face. Her thoughts swirled in a frantic storm as she tried to comprehend the nightmare unfolding before her. This wasn't just a personal betrayal, it was a public spectacle. Her legs wobbled, threatening to collapse under the weight of her choices. What are you doing, Brad? she asked her voice barely a whisper. Robert, stunned and frightened, quickly sprang into action. This is crazy, he shouted, his voice trembling with fear. He jumped out of bed and scrambled to put on his clothes, trying to cover himself. But it was too late. Everything was caught on camera, his panic, his vulnerability, his desperate attempt to escape. As he hurriedly put on his pants, Robert looked at the window, his only chance to get away. With his heart racing, he made a run for it, almost tripping in his rush. His shaking hand struggled with the latch, but he finally managed to open it. He jumped out of the window, crashing into the bushes below before disappearing into the night. The sound of his fleeing footsteps faded into the distance, a testament to his escape. Barbara stood frozen, her body trembling as the cameras turned their full attention to her. The bright lights, like countless eyes, watched her every move, every expression. Please, Brad, I'm begging you, she pleaded, her voice shaking, tears streaming down her face. This isn't right. We can fix this. Please stop. Brad remained cold. He stepped closer, narrowing his eyes as he locked onto her gaze. Fix it, he repeated, his voice laced with bitterness. We had more than enough time to fix everything. Instead, you chose to deceive me, to betray my trust. But now everyone will know the truth. The camera crew moved around them, capturing every tear, every sob, every moment of Barbara's breakdown. She studied Brad's face hoping to find even the slightest trace of the man she once loved, the man who had once loved her in return. But in his eyes, she saw only cold, unyielding fury. Brad, forgive me, she pleaded, desperation evident in her voice. I never wanted things to turn out this way. Please don't do this. We can fix this, I promise. Just give me a chance, Barbara pleaded. Brad shook his head, showing no emotion. A chance after everything you've done, he said, letting out a bitter laugh. His voice was harsh and lacked any real amusement. No, Barbara, the time for chances is over. Now it's time for consequences. Barbara felt a wave of despair hit her. There was no way out. The truth about her actions and the pain she had caused was now clear for everyone to see. She never imagined it would come to this, that the man she once loved would so ruthlessly betray her in front of an audience. The cameras kept rolling, capturing every agonizing moment of her suffering, she felt the walls closing in around her. Her life was falling apart as the truth of her situation began to dawn on her. Please, Brad, she whispered again, fully aware that it would change nothing. Forgive me. Brad looked at her, his gaze icy and emotionless. You're only ashamed because you got caught, he said, his tone devoid of feeling. Everyone will see your true colors, and when this is all over, you'll have nothing left. His words pierced her deeply, each one intensifying the pain. She had expected Brad to be hurt and angry, but she never thought he would go to such lengths to destroy her. The man standing before her now felt like a stranger, someone she could no longer recognize. The camera crew, oblivious to the tense atmosphere, continued filming every angle and every moment of Barbara's unraveling. Barbara felt exposed and vulnerable, like an animal trapped with no way out. Darling, she pleaded once more, her voice trembling, I still love you. I still care, can't we? She began. But Brad cut her off, his face hardening further. Love, don't even start with that. You threw it away the moment you decided to be with him. Brad gestured towards the window where Robert had disappeared. This isn't about love, Barbara. It's about justice, Brad said. Now you have to face the consequences of your choices. Barbara's legs gave way, and she fell onto the bed, shaking with sobs as the harsh reality hit her. There was no turning back. What was broken could never be fixed. She had lost everything, her dignity, her marriage, her future. Everything was falling apart in front of the cameras that were recording her painful downfall. Brad's face showed cold satisfaction. 
He had been waiting for this moment and had planned it carefully. But as it happened, he felt a deep emptiness where his anger had once been. Turning to the camera crew, he gave a curt nod. That's a wrap, he said, his tone even and emotionless. The camera crew began packing up their equipment, their task now complete. The only sound breaking the oppressive silence in the room was Barbara's sobbing as she lay on the bed. Brad paused at the door, casting one last fleeting glance at her. Goodbye, traitor, he whispered softly before disappearing from her view, leaving her surrounded by the remnants of her shattered life. The door closed behind him, the final sound marking the end of everything she once held dear. The night the footage was released, it spread across the internet with a speed Barbara couldn't have imagined. The video flooded social media, news outlets, and even viral video platforms. Strangers, who had never met her, shared, forwarded, and dissected the video, suddenly feeling entitled to critique every aspect of her existence. In her dimly lit living room, Barbara sat with the curtains tightly drawn as if trying to shut out the outside world. Her phone buzzed incessantly on the coffee table, but she lacked the strength to reach for it. Notifications continued to pile up, serving as a testament to her isolation. Her phone was flooded with messages from friends, missed calls from family, and comments from strangers who, inexplicably, had gotten hold of her number. She could already imagine what they would say. There was no need to read them to know that the life she had known was over. The screen blinked again with another notification. You're trending. It almost sounded like an achievement. Barbara stared blankly at her phone, feeling numb at first, then hit by a wave of panic. Yes, she was trending, but for all the wrong reasons. Her betrayal and weakness were now exposed to everyone. Her breath caught in her throat as she scrolled through countless messages. The hardest part was reading messages from people she knew. Her sister had called five times, with each voicemail sounding more frantic. Her closest friends sent messages full of shock, disappointment, and pity. But what hurt the most were the messages from strangers. Harsh, unrestrained words struck her like daggers. Homewrecker, you brought this on yourself. You deserve this. The insult swarmed her mind, and she felt the suffocating weight of their hatred. She buried her face in her hands, her body shaking with silent sobs. It felt like every tear was tearing her apart from the inside. The life she had once known crumbled in an instant, leaving no path back. The Barbara that people knew, admired, and perhaps even loved was gone, replaced by a stranger she barely recognized. Someone whose entire existence had been shattered by a single devastating mistake. Brad sat in his apartment, staring blankly at the television screen. Hours ago, he had turned off his phone, overwhelmed by the flood of calls and messages. Some were congratulations from people he hadn't spoken to in years, proud of what he'd done. Others were concerned, asking if he was okay and if he wanted to talk. But Brad had no interest in talking. The man responsible for publicly humiliating his wife felt more isolated than ever, his reflection in the dark screen stared back at him with judgment. Was this what he had really wanted? At the time, it had seemed like the perfect plan. Make her face the consequences of her actions, expose her true nature to the world, let everyone see the reality. But now, sitting in the silence, he felt only an overwhelming emptiness. The doorbell rang, breaking the stillness. For a moment, Brad hesitated, hoping the visitor would leave. But the ringing continued, followed by a firm knock on the door. With a sigh, he finally got up and went to open it. Come on in, he said, greeting his friend and stepping aside. Clark had been a solid ally throughout this whole situation, helping Brad piece everything together. But now, looking at his friend, Brad felt unsure. Clark entered with a serious look and sat on the couch. He glanced around the room, noticing the empty beer bottles on the table and the general mess. How are you holding up? Clark asked. Brad shrugged and sat in the chair opposite him. I don't know, he said flatly. At first, it felt good to see her face when she realized what was happening. But now, I'm not so sure. Clark nodded in understanding. It's normal to feel conflicted, he said. You were hurt and wanted revenge. But revenge can be tricky. It might give you some satisfaction at first, but it can also leave lasting scars. Brad ran his hands over his face and let out a deep sigh. I thought watching her suffer would bring me peace, that it would justify everything. But instead, I just feel empty. Clark leaned in closer, his voice both gentle and firm. That's because what you did didn't solve anything, Brad. It only added more pain to what was already there. Brad looked up, meeting Clark's eyes. So what do I do now? His voice trembled with desperation. I can't change the past. The whole world knows what she did, but now they know what I did too. How do I move on from this? Clark paused for a moment, 
carefully considering his words. You need to find a way to move on, he finally said. Not just from what she did to you, but from what you did to her. You have to let go, Brad, or it will destroy you. Brad nodded, though doubt still lingered in his heart. The anger and betrayal were still fresh, eating away at him. At the same time, the guilt and regret over who he had become in his quest for revenge weighed heavily on him. I just wanted her to be held accountable for her actions, he muttered, more to himself than to Clark. I don't know if I can ever trust again, Brad said. Clark stood up and put a reassuring hand on Brad's shoulder. It's not too late to start healing, he said. But you have to want it. You need to decide to move forward. Brad watched as Clark walked toward the door, leaving him alone with his thoughts. Clark's words hung in the air. Thank you, Clark, Brad said quietly. For everything. Clark nodded and said, Take care, Brad. Try to trust again and live a full life. As the door closed, Brad was alone once more. He looked out the window, watching the distant city lights flicker. Life outside continued, but he felt frozen, stuck in the very moment he had created. The triumph he had so desperately craved, the fulfillment he had sought had crumbled to dust on his tongue. All that remained was the long journey he would have to face alone, picking up the pieces of his shattered life. Brad was slowly coming to terms with his new reality. The thrill of vengeance had long since faded, leaving behind a hollow sense of victory. His days passed in a routine, in the attempts to rebuild a life that seemed irreparably broken. One of those routine days, the doorbell rang. At first, Brad didn't pay much attention to it since he wasn't expecting anyone, and visitors had become rare after the scandal erupted. But when he opened the door, what he saw sent a rush of anger through him. Standing before him was Robert, the man responsible for the collapse of his marriage. Brad gripped the doorframe tighter as fury ignited inside him. What the hell are you doing here? He demanded his voice trembling with barely restrained rage. Before him stood Robert, looking nothing like the arrogant figure Brad remembered. His clothes were wrinkled and dark circles hung beneath his eyes. The self-assured demeanor had vanished, replaced with a palpable sense of defeat. Under Brad's piercing gaze, Robert seemed to shrink, lowering his eyes to the floor. I'm not here to fight, he said softly, his voice lacking its usual confidence. I need to apologize. This caught Brad off guard. He had expected Robert to come with anger or denial, but not this. Apologize? Brad repeated, disbelief in his voice. Do you really think that after everything you've done, a simple apology will make things right? Brad felt a twinge of unease at the sharpness of his own tone, but stayed firm. I know I don't deserve your forgiveness, Robert said, looking sincerely at Brad. I've lost everything too, Brad. My job, my family, my friends, they've all seen what happened. I'm an outcast now, just like Barbara. For a moment, Brad remained silent, looking at the man standing before him. The anger that had consumed him since discovering the affair began to wane, replaced by an unexpected feeling, pity. He had never imagined that Robert, the man who had taken so much from him, could be brought so low. Do you think that makes us even? Brad asked, though his voice had lost some of its harshness. Do you truly believe that by losing everything, we're now on the same level? He shook his head, and the defeat in his expression was clear. No, Robert answered softly. I don't think that at all. I just need you to know that I'm genuinely sorry for everything. He wasn't just talking about the affair, but how it had ended and the pain it had caused. As the anger drained from Brad, he felt a strange emptiness. He had imagined this moment countless times, rehearsing his words and the ways he would confront Robert. But when the moment finally arrived, all those plans seemed futile. You actually have the nerve to show up here, Brad said at last though there was no longer the sharp edge to his tone that he expected. But here's what I'll tell you. You're a miserable person, and now you're suffering for what you've done. An apology can't fix it, Brad said. Robert nodded, his shoulders drooping. I deeply regret it, he said. I just needed to say that. I want you to know I regret everything. It wasn't worth it. None of it was. I've ruined my own life, and I can't undo that. They stood in silence, the weight of their shared past heavy between them. Brad's mind was a whirlwind of confusion as he tried to process everything that had just happened. The anger, the betrayal, everything remained the same, but something had changed. For the first time, Brad saw Robert not as the antagonist in his story, but as a man who had made a grave mistake and was now facing the consequences. Have you paid for your actions? Brad asked, his voice carrying not an accusation, but genuine curiosity. What do you think happens next? Robert shrugged, a look of agreement crossing his face. I don't know, he admitted. I don't expect anything from you, Brad. 
I just wanted you to understand that I regret what happened, and I'll try to make amends in my life. Even if it may already be too late, some part of Brad's soul wanted to call out to Robert to say something more, but the words eluded him. Instead, he simply said, You will carry this burden for the rest of your days. I have no intention of forgiving you. You destroyed 45 years of marriage, he said. He wasn't entirely sure he meant every word, but it was a step forward, a way to begin overcoming the bitterness that had consumed him for so long. Revenge had been cruel, and though it brought a certain satisfaction at the time, it also left him feeling alone. Now, with Robert's apology lingering in the air, he felt a small but significant shift within himself. The hatred that had overwhelmed him since discovering the affair began to fade, slowly being replaced by something he couldn't yet define. Maybe it was understanding or acceptance. Brad closed the door and leaned against it, his mind racing with everything that had just happened. Robert's surprise visit had caught him off guard, making him face emotions he had been trying to ignore. Revenge had pushed him to act, but now he needed to move on. He had won the fight, and the betrayers had been punished. As he looked out the window at the city below, he saw that life went on. The scandal was fading from the news, replaced by new stories. He had lost his wife, his trust, and the future he had once imagined with a loving partner. Yet, perhaps this unexpected apology from the man who had hurt him was the start of something new. It offered a chance to let go of the lingering anger and begin healing. The sun had set and Brad took a deep breath, feeling the weight start to lift. The future was still uncertain, but for the first time in a long while, he felt ready to face it. Second story, I'm 25, and my wife is 23. We've been married for just over a year and together for almost five years, facing many challenges together. Four days ago, my wife told me she'd been having an emotional affair with a coworker for the past two weeks. I was shocked and felt betrayed, but also a bit relieved because she had been acting differently she said she ended things when he tried to kiss her. They were having lunch together, texting all day, and secretly meeting. I told her I would talk to him to get his side of the story and specifically told her not to mention it. After talking to him, I felt a bit better because it didn't seem as serious as I thought. Today, I felt like I didn't have the full truth, so I read her journal and found out she had been lying. She continued the affair after saying she ended it and had told him I was going to talk to him. I confronted her and gave her an ultimatum him or me. She admitted she was in love with him, apologized, and said she would end it for closure. I no longer trust her, so I let her meet him to break things off. Instead, she kissed him. After her breakup, I knew something was wrong, and she admitted she couldn't end it and had kissed him. I'm so numb from the betrayal that it didn't even make me feel worse. She called him in front of me to end it and says she wants to fix our marriage and will do whatever it takes, like finding a new job, going to therapy, and having no contact with him. This affair happened right after our wedding anniversary, on my birthday, and the day after she told me my grandmother died. It's been a rough week, and the guy is 20. I love my wife, and part of me wants to give her a chance to change since she says she'll do whatever it takes. But another part of me says to leave and let him have her because I don't deserve this lying and manipulation. I'm really lost and confused. Any advice would be appreciated.